boys and girls, kids of all ages. So, Doug, astronaut, scientifically literate, you are on camera at a tweet up. It's great to see you all. Great to see you all. You guys, we're going to Mars. <laughs> So I'm deeply invested in this flight uh, because, uh, as you may know, first of all, I, uh, back in the, uh, before disco, <laughs> I had, almost live? Uh, almost live was the Seattle Lights, a comedy show I used to work on, but, uh, I had Carl Sagan for astronomy. You guys probably know Carl uh -huh. Sagan. We talked to these kids, these kids today, they've never heard of him, but that's fine. Things change, it's not great, but it's, it's acceptable. And so then I got on the mailing list for the Planetary Society. Any Planetary Society members here? Yes! <laughs> so, my fellow Planetary Society members, we have the third Mars dial is screwed onto this thing, and it's going to be on Mars in August. Uh, we encourage you all, Sunday night, August 5th, to participate in Planet Fest. We're going to have the, the, the center will be near Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, but we hope to have events around the world. We will celebrate uh, Curiosity landing on Mars and perhaps making the next astonishing discovery about where we all came from and are we alone. <laughs> so uh, the idea is, uh, as you may know, my was anybody at my talk yesterday? And you're still here, right? We were here. We were here. Way to go. Uh, I wasn't. Believe me. I, uh, no. So, if you don't know the story, it doesn't take long. My dad was in prison camp in World War II. They had no, or hardly ever had electricity. So he became fascinated with sundials. That's how they would reckon time. Apparently, they would remind the uh, military guards there that it was time for lunch and things like that, <laughs> using Sunday, using reckoning the time with a shadow. So I was brought up with all this thing, and I was in a meeting with the photometric calibration target at Cornell, and I didn't really know what it was. It's a stick that casts a shadow, and I kind of went crazy. we got to make that into a sundial. So there's going to be another sundial on Mars. Just to reassure you, taxpayers and voters from around the world, <laughs> This was the flight spare that we were, th we were thinking it was going to go to a museum. Uh, but no, uh, <laughs> trying to save money on Curiosity, we'll, just, we'll just screw it on there. It's going to be fine. <laughs> so it's going to Mars. It has a motto. Somebody else should have a motto. Two Mars to explore. It's going to be big fun. And then, Planetary Society peoples, we were all very excited. Well, of course, we're still somewhat excited, hoping to test this crazy hypothesis, did life start on Mars, get knocked into space by some impactor three billion years ago, and make its way to Earth, and you and I, everybody, the grass, the insects, which there's no shortage here, <laughs> we are all descendants of some Martian microbe, which would be pretty crazy but not so crazy that it's not necessarily true. So we were going to test this with the Russian Phobos Grunt mission, Grunt. Doug, am I saying that right? That's soil in Russian. Uh, but it's stuck in orbit right now. The day before yesterday, we got a little signal from it, but uh, I'm not sure we're going to be able to give it a, to send it the rest of the way to Mars. But that aside, this is an Atlas V, people. This is a, this is this is um, heavy lift. So it's very exciting. <clears throat> and at the planetary side, we try to engage, we work to engage people around the world in space exploration. And I don't know you all individually, but I've got a feeling really deep down you would be proud to be wearing our brand new Space Geek buttons. <laughs> yes. 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 So if you get a chance, check out planetary.org. And uh, you can sign up for your Space Geek button and participate as a fellow Space Geek. And we will seek to enrich uh, all humankind through space exploration. So that's, the, uh, that's how we'll start. Are there any questions of what we've covered so far? <laughs>
Ted. Any <laughs> questions? <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Yes, a woman with hand up from the Sentinel, Montgomery County, Maryland. That's right, that's right. Maryland's in the United States, for those of you who don't know. Yes. <laughs> Some one of those queens? Yes. There's people back east someplace? Yeah. It's not yes. as warm as down here, but we can have bugs too. Anyway, I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about your, your early education and how your experiences in D.C. public schools and then at Sidwell Friends sort of influenced your views on American education. And if you could comment on um, the fact that a lot of these tweets, uh, tweets is that what we're calling you guys? Tweets? Yes. Are we tweeters? Tweets. 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 Of course, you're yeah. tweets. Oh, by the way, excuse me a second, Steph. I asked some of the powers that be what the password was. They don't know. Okay. <laughs> I got a it's, it's long. You ready? <laughs> so it's long. Uh, let me just get a picture. Let's get that done for crying out loud. Uh, and this word will say no laughing, no smiling. Hey, Beth! <laughs> STS-134. My sweetheart painted a picture and got, gave me this for my birthday. Yes. Mm -hmm. Space geek. Mm -hmm. yes. We are. Yes, so Stephanie, you asked me Helen. a question. Helen. Helen, that's why I was getting Stephanie's short hand for Helen. Helen. <laughs> Stephanie is our NASA, excuse me, I went dyslexic on you. I'll take yes. a promotion. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, a lot of these tweets have been getting... Uh, students as to ask questions here and I wanted to know what you thought of the, the sort of the impact social media is having on the modern classroom. Well, on the modern classroom, I hope, like everything else, it is, dare I say it, changing the world. <laughs> so uh, what I remind you all, and you've heard the story, when I was young, we had to look things up in a book. <laughs> <laughs> and in, in space exploration, by the time you look it up, it's sort of gone. Why? There's, there's five moons of Jupiter? Wait, there's 75 moons of Jupiter. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the wonderful thing, but you have to learn, in my opinion, we have to show kids, students, that you'll get more information of slightly, or of lower quality. So then you have more information, but it's lower quality information. So you have to learn to uh, deal with that, which I think is really a fantastic thing for science educators because you automatically you have to incorporate critical thinking into all of your uh, research. You do everything that the man tries to tell you. Uh, that you don't. T you learn. I hope you learn not to take everybody's word for everything. On the other hand, when you find a preponderance of evidence, like how many people are going to lie about the atomic number of beryllium? <laughs> I guess a few things. I'm going to fool those kids. <laughs> Say it's 54. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. That'll test them. So, but when you get 10 kids that have the, bril the atomic number of brilliant wrong, you can suspect they're all going to the wrong bad source. Yeah. So, uh, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, the big thing I used to spend, I'm sure you all did, spent enormous amounts of time doing research on facts that are now just accessible, if I may, literally at your fingertips. So, mm -hmm. I'll be sitting at my desk. Uh, we used to have a saying uh, on the Bill and I show, the party doesn't start till Bill gets out the dictionary. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm uh, very enchanted by words and so on. And nowadays, I'll have a dictionary on my desk. I won't even reach for the book. Just don't even reach for it, because I got 14 dictionaries online. And so, this I believe the ability to share information quickly will allow people who are in school today to, dare I say it, change the world. <laughs> and they need to because people of our generation have left the world headed for climate change and everything's going to, like, not clear that these seawalls are going to be enough in the future, with the next 60 years or so, of climate change. So we're going to need people to think uh, in new ways to find new sources of energy, new ways to move it around, and ways to do more with less. And all of that's going to take information, information that we can share. So 
to all teachers, I say, encourage the use of the internet and encourage critical thinking and evaluating the information you found on there. Uh, <laughs> Bill, is it true that you hate kids? <laughs> no. I read it on the internet. Uh, well, uh, it's not true. <laughs> no. That's why I did a kid show. Oh, that's right, that was you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the reason I did a kid show, I wanted to affect the future. I, I wanted to get young people excited about science so the future will have more scientists, especially more girls or women in science, so that we have better science and a better future for all humankind. So, uh, that was the first question, Helen. There was a follow-up. Well, we sort of, sort of did both, but... Oh, but uh, lucky you. you. <laughs> so does anyone in the Twitter crowd have a question? Yeah. No, I stumped him. so odd why you think it. Well, there's a lot of people in the U.S. What do they care? This is a TV show in the United States. First of all, thank you for changing my daughter's lives mm -hmm. and by extension my grandchildren's lives. Um, right on. How old are your daughters? My daughters are 33 and 30. Oh, yeah. And they have six grandchildren. Uh, Way to go, dude. <laughs> some genes in the future. Revolution. <laughs> yes. Uh, She's what, a biochemist. For, for any, uh, my, when I went there as a biochemist, um, probably part of because of your influence. Uh, oh, but that's so cool. But for a um, for my grandchildren, uh, if they want to be into planetary uh, science, planetary ex exploration, um, what uh, what aside from school classes and things like that, um, where would be their best resources? You think to people? How old are these people now? The grandkids? Uh, nine and seven. Yeah, from, from nine down to three. Okay, let's talk again briefly about me. <laughs> so. I have been uh, associated with something called Explora Vision for uh, 11 years, <laughs> and this is uh, Toshiba, Toshiba USA has the same problem NASA has, same problem Boeing has, same problem, by the way, the Air Force has this problem in space. They need, we need people uh, in engineering school to take jobs when they're graduated so that a company like Toshiba can stay in business. NASA can stay in business. The Air Force can stay in business. U.S. Air Force. And so you need people uh, graduated from high school to go into engineering school and so on. So this uh, competition is sponsored by the National Science Teachers Association and it's funded, and the CA box, uh, and it's funded by Toshiba USA. And this is because this Toshiba guys, they're, they're almost at least 11 or 20 years ago, they were all men, but they really believed in the future of science and so on. What's happening? That's the television. What are we doing? Two hours. We're on a hole, a two hour hole. The screen over here. Anyway, so, okay, 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 so here's the thing. <laughs> when you think of scholarship programs by like National Science Teacher Associate, uh, you, many people think of high school in the U.S. or 11th or 12th form like that. But this is a scholarship that has high school things, but it starts in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. There's scholarships for kindergartners, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and then high school. And the idea is you have to come up, you and your team of fellow students, you're a kid, have to come up with an invention you think will come into existence in 20 years. And you have to do research and show the materials to be made of and how it work and so on. It's a very cool thing. You get a usually a Toshiba laptop if you win and um, two and a half hours uh, money for a college. So it's a cool competition. So if you're asking right, they do that. So the Planetary Society is now doing Bill and I videos funded by Toshiba. They'll be on one of our first ones about multi-layer insulation. How when you don't have any air in space, how do you keep a spacecraft warm or cool? And the second one's about exoplanets and the wobbling of the star. And yes, we got me and a hula dancer doing the hula <laughs> with styrofoam stars. Oh, it's hilarious. Oh. So that should, if nothing don't happen, and the man approves it, it will start airing first airing, cabling, what do you call it? A, uh, tweeting, uh, internet. <laughs> Thursday, December 8th, if nothing will happen. But that may slip because they'll decide to have it timed with these other scholarship events. Yes. Thank you, Bill. We have to go. <laughs> they have to go. They have to you go. Have to stay. Stay. Two hours for our class. How many people have been to a lunch? 
Oh, wow. wow. How many people have not been to a wash? Eh, ma, I'm just telling you. <laughs> Ground shakes, your chest shakes, and this is a big old rocket, and it gets out of here in a hurry, and it is just, I'm telling you. That, people, back me up. It is the coolest yeah. thing. Woo! And I'm on Space Geeks! Yeah.